And sometimes he can kind of ju juke a little bit too, so he can be a pain in the butt to kill. All right, so we've killed the parasite. Now we have the Colossus beetle coming after us. This guy is big, he is slow, and he will bite you. But because he's big and slow, what you can do is you can get behind him and poke him in the butt. Welcome everybody to Osiris New Dawn. We have a new update out and it is for stables. So I'm very excited to start a new series. Uh, so the reason I'm starting a new series for those of you who have been watching uh, Experimental is because I want uh, the Let's Play to start from the very beginning and be consistent all the way through for the for the playlist and so forth. Plus the fact that, you know, moving the Experimental save over to the stable save that, you know, there's always a risk that something might not quite work. So we're just going to start fresh with that. The other thing I'm going to do different is that this is going to be a Let's Play series, but I'm also going to kind of, at least in the early game, uh, do it tutorial style too for those people who uh, are new to the game. We're probably going to get some new eyes on this game since it's a new stable release. Uh, so that way, you know, new players can kind of see, you know, how to do things and how to get started. Okay. So let's go ahead and click single player. And we're going to start a new character here. I'm going to choose the Ranger class, and the reason I'm choosing the Ranger class, for those of you who are new, is because it has an even distribution of points in all three of the tech trees, Science, Engineering, and Combat. In the long run, it doesn't really matter which class you choose, because you will get all of the points. You'll be able to learn all the points by about mid-game. Uh, so they still have, you know, some balancing and stuff to do with that, but, uh, you know, we're going to need points in all of them right away for various reasons. So we're just going to go ahead and go right down the middle and choose other ranger class here okay let's confirm that uh colors i'm just going to choose uh, we're going to go with the same color scheme that we used in the um the experimental version so we're going to basically be kind of red and black and we'll put like a, a light gray there and we'll just make this white so that just you know changes the the way your suit looks and that sort of thing uh we're going to confirm that uh, if you wanted to here you can change you know the way your character looks you can make yourself taller bigger shorter fatter that sort of thing it uh, doesn't really matter in single player, uh, but you can also do multiplayer in this game too. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to make yourself look funny for your friends or whatever, you can do that. But we're just going to leave everything the same. Quick confirm. Now, stat points. This is important. So here's my recommendation to new players. Put two points in speed and don't ever put any more points in speed at all. And the reason for that is because the faster you, you go, the more squirrely you get. And you might think that's useful. Well, it is if you're running away from a giant crab monster. But when you're, you know, working around your base... Uh, it gets to be a pain in the butt because you move so fast that you kind of bounce off the walls. So uh, two points in speed is all you should really ever need, uh, and that, that's what I recommend. Now, uh, favor health and strength first, and then stamina after that. So we're going to put three points in health, three points in strength, which helps you carry more stuff or more weight, I should say, uh, because you do get encumbered by weight in this game as well as slots. And then uh, we'll put the remaining two points in stamina, Okay. Uh, let's hit confirm, and now we come to the skill points themselves. On the left-hand side, we have the engineering tree. Right-hand side, we have science, and below, we have combat. So, um, early on in the game, uh, we want to focus on salvaging, because we're going to do a lot of salvaging. It's going to be very important to get us going, as well as mining. Um, so, we're going to start with salvage faster, which, of course, we have to anyways, because that's the prereq for everything else. Um, and then we're going to go to salvage faster 2, and we're going to uh, increase hover boot in you know the next time we get some points because that's going to help us travel around on foot so it'll it could be a little while before we get into a vehicle all right so for and and what i'll do guys is as we get more points and we go into the skill tree i will uh i will explain the skills at that point and why i'm taking those skills at that point in time uh so start off with you know favoring salvage uh that's what i recommend anyways for the engineering tree for the science tree we have to take solar panel output and then uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to work up to the water consumption skills as soon as possible because water, food and water, in fact, uh, if you're using the normal settings, which we're going to do, um, can really be a pain in the neck in the early game. So once you get to this, this fourth decrease water, then water will not be a problem for you uh, after that. Uh, likewise, you can go down into these little microscopes where it says boost fruit nutrition, and that will help with your food. So we kind of want to do both of those. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work... Um, well, I'm going to actually go both ways. Now, here's an odd thing about the skill tree. It needs a little bit of balancing because um, Phoenix Fire put increased space walk speed as the next thing that you have to go before you can get here, which makes no sense 
because you won't even be walking in space for quite some time. But nevertheless, that's the way it currently is, so we are forced to take it. Doesn't do us any good in the beginning game, but what can you do, right? Um, and then we're also going to do boost fruit nutrition. So we're going to be working up towards water and working down towards, you know, better nutrition from fruit so that our food and water consumption is more manageable because it, it really is a pain in the neck in the early game. Uh, again, this is all in normal settings, by the way. Okay, now combat. Uh, we have to take increased melee damage. Uh, melee and mining are very important in the early game uh, in the combat tree. Um, so increasing mining damage is going to be really useful, but also increasing um you know things like your melee damage and your melee tool durability and things like that so let's go ahead and go increase mining damage and increase projectile damage because we really want to kind of go down both of these trees okay so here again uh, as we play th the game and we have more skill points to spend we'll go into here we'll talk about what we're going to take next why we're taking it uh, so that way you guys get a good understanding of how this all works okay let's click confirm uh, we are OG, as always, so let's uh, put that in. Now we come to difficulty. If you want to, you can click the custom button, and then there's all kinds of different things that you can adjust in here um, for a, a custom gameplay experience. One of the things that I'm, uh, I would like to do and plan to do at some point soon is I'd like to actually do like a hardcore... Uh, playthrough of the game where we turn all the you know all the stuff up the aliens you know the monsters are, are stronger the storms are more dangerous that sort of thing uh, however uh, because this is our first time through this new stable release we're going to keep everything on normal everything on the default setting uh, just so everybody can see how it works on the normal settings okay so we're just going to keep this on normal now if you wanted an easier experience you could go this route uh, if you wanted an extreme experience you know those are just presets um that you can do there's also a creative mode which i've never actually worked with but you know that way you don't have to worry about monsters and stuff you can just go in and build and have some fun and explore uh, but of course again we'll keep it on normal okay so now when i click this button what's going to happen is there's a new a really cool new intro uh to to the game if you haven't seen it uh so we're going to let that just play i will I'll, I'll be quiet while it's playing and then i'll meet you guys down on the planet and we'll go from there so enjoy the intro All right, there you go. That was a pretty cool intro. Yeah, so um, a question I get sometimes is, does Osiris have a story and missions and so forth? The answer is sort of. <laughs> the answer is actually, yes, it does. Uh, but it's it's very much a work in progress. Um, so, you know, there, there is like a, a beginning tutorial, uh, which we're going to do right now, um, and a little bit of a story, but, you know, that that is a work in progress. So mostly this is going to be sandbox for now. Okay, so that being said, 
uh, what we have to do is we have to pick up this uh, tape with the F key and then uh, we go into our inventory by pressing F1 right click and use and what 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 we're gonna have is we're gonna have this duct tape and that duct tape is going to basically help us um, patch our suit when it gets damaged now the next thing we have to do is we have to pick up this bandage with the F key and again press F1 and then right click to use it to heal up because we took some damage physical damage to our body uh, during the crash landing all right now Next thing it wants us to do is exit the pod. So we hit F to try and get out of the pod. We can't quite do it, so it's telling us to pull out our knife, which is down on the toolbar in the number two slot. And we hit this to break it open, and then F to exit pod. Okay. Um, so this game is like Imperion Galactic Survival in the sense that F is the action key instead of E. E is actually the holster key. Um, so I'm just going to leave all the keys on the default settings again, you know, for people... Who are new to the game and want to just see how it works right out of the box all right so once you get out of your pod um you have on your toolbar a couple of things you have uh what we call the multi-tool and it's kind of like a little welding device and you have this um survival knife and of course you know you have the tape that we just put on our toolbar so the very first thing you want to do is you want to walk around and you want to look for supplies that you can pick up off the ground but be careful of this fire, it will burn you if you get too close. So we just found some MREs there, which we're going to need early on. Oxygen tanks, glass container, uh, actually we'll, we'll, we'll grab the rock too, because we're going to need that too. Uh, tanks, you know, pretty much just walk around the crash site, and any type of supplies, items, that sort of thing that you see, you want to pick up, because you're going to need all of this stuff later on. And some of it you might need right away, like, you know, medic medical kits and so forth. Let's hit press F1 take and put our medical kit down on our toolbar, as well as these bandages. You can have two types of bandages. You have little bandages and you have the big first aid kits. I put the big first aid kits in my number six, six slot, so that way if I'm taking severe damage, I can quickly take it. If I have a little more time, then I just go into my inventory and take the smaller bandages to heal up. You can also heal from eating as well. Okay, let's pick up um, a couple more of these stones too, because we're going to need those early on. Uh, we're not going to grab the space debris cr quite yet. We want to walk around first and pick up any other supplies just in this immediate vicinity um, that we can find. And then the next thing we're going to do is start salvaging. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about where we are. This is Proteus 2. Proteus 2 is a moon of a Thesis Prime, which is the big ginormous planet with the gas ring. It's a gas planet with the rings around it, which we can't really quite see where we are right at the moment. It's probably just because of the weather. Um, so this is actually a moon that we're on, and it's kind of like a deserty, um, you know, dry type of climate. So oxygen, how does oxygen work in the game? Well, basically when you're on Proteus and also when you're on Aziel, which is another moon we can travel to later, um, your suit is able to basically uh, create oxygen from the environment. So we have like an oxygen, um, <laughs> excuse me, gazoon type. Our suit, our suit is able to basically manufacture oxygen, uh, you know, from the environment. So we can't directly breathe the air. That's why when our suit gets breached, we have to patch it. But we also do not need to have our own supply of oxygen while we're on Proteus. Okay, a Proteus two to be precise. But when we go into space. Or if we're on um, the, uh, the the other moon, uh, which name escapes me right at the moment, uh, that we're going to go to, uh, then we do have to have oxygen at that point, okay? Uh, so I just want to make that sure that was clear because it was a little confusing to me up front. All right, so uh, now the next thing we want to do is we want to start salvaging um, the crash and salvaging these items. So what, th what that's going to do is we basically hold down our right mouse button uh, with our little welder tool here. Oh, they actually changed it. It used to kind of make a welding animation. Now, now they, they changed that from experimental. Um, so now it kind of makes more like a almost a grinding type of animation. And what this is doing is this is putting uh, space debris or scrap metal, excuse me, into our inventory. And we're going to need this to build uh, some of the early game items. So salvaging is very, very important uh, when you're first starting out in the game. Okay, so I'm going to go around and salvage stuff. Oh, by the way, you can do you can see that we do have missions on the left-hand side, and it wants us to press V. So if you press V, then you can go into third-person view and, and play in third-person view if you want to. I mostly like to play in first-person view, but uh, third-person view is, is definitely an option for players who might want to, to do it that way, okay? Uh, so I'm pressing V to go back down in there. Now, the missions, 
again, the missions have you know just a really really basic tutorial that starts you off with, and then they send they want you to find a crash site, uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it it doesn't really go much beyond that at this point in time. But you can tell though that the devs have you know plans for it. They they are definitely you know working on a story, working on fleshing out missions and. You know, the, the end product should be pretty neat, you know, once it's done. We are also in um, one of the Gleazy star systems, which, by the way, if you guys didn't know this, is an, a, a real actual star system uh, that's relatively close to Earth. And, um, you know, if you're into exoplanets and that sort of thing, you probably know that, uh, you know, scientists have, have discovered uh, what they call exoplanets in the Gleazy system that could potentially support life. So I think that's kind of the basis, you know, behind of, of you know uh, the Osiris and if you guys saw the little story you know in the intro it kind of talked about that just a little bit so I think that's kind of cool one of the things that Osiris attempts to do is it attempts to be kind of a hard sci-fi uh, or another way of putting that somewhat realistic at least in comparison to you know a lot of the other space games that you might see out there um, and so uh, for example we're going to have mineral hardnesses and densities and those are based upon on real actual um, you know, minerals. There's like a name name for it, like a table. A geologist would know that kind of thing. But anyway, they they, they do a pretty. You know, they're they're trying to go for a, a real a more realistic type of experience. Um, so you know, that's kind of cool. I think you know that they do that. All right, so let's continue. Um, now, what it wants us, wants us to do is build a debris hut, and we do want to do that fairly soon. But I don't want to quite do that right away. Uh, this is an aluminum node. Oh, here's another thing. Um, I like to turn the bloom and stuff off, but the problem is, is that the game doesn't remember that you know, those settings. It doesn't persist. So every time you log into the game, you have to go back in here, and you have to uh, click save and continue to turn it off. Because as you saw earlier, it's just it's just too much, it's too glaring and in your face. So I turn that stuff off. But you have to do it every time you log in. It's kind of a pain in the neck, but I'm sure they'll fix it at some point. All right. So notice that this is aluminum. And notice that aluminum has a hardness of 2.75. Why is that important? Because you have to make sure that whatever tool you're going to use to harvest a mineral um, is can handle that hardness, okay? So uh, right now, all we have at our disposal for mining is a stone, or more precisely, a bashing stone. So what I'm going to do is press F2. All right, and I'm going to go into uh, the craft tab. So craft tab is what I can make in my own inventory. These are uh, structures and different things that you know we can make later on, but we'll talk about that uh, those as we get to them. And what I want to make now is a bashing rock, and all it requires is just one stone. The bashing rock is actually quite useful um, for an early game tool because what we can do with it is we can use it to harvest um, berries from trees, and if we find what's called a... A rock outcropping, we can uh, harvest the rock outcropping with the bashing stone. We'll get stone from that, which we need in the early game. And you also have occasionally will get either copper, gold, or I think it's silver. But watch this. If I try and harvest this, see in the upper left-hand corner, it says this mineral is too hard to harvest with this item. So we have to get a tool that can harvest uh, something that's 2.75 um, rated for, you know, that, that hardness. Uh, which we will do here in a little while, but we don't have that available to us quite yet. Okay, so um, now here's something that's really cool that's that's new from the last stable release. You have different, or rather you can get different types of materials from plants and animals depending upon what you use to harvest it. So if I, um, let, let's use this as an example. This is uh, basically um, a sea urchin, and you don't want to run into it because if you do, just... For science purposes, watch. <laughs> it breaches your suit, right? So we have to get the, the the tape to repair it. Okay, so I select the tape, just press the left mouse button. Now, um, first thing you want you you're going to want to do for science points is you're going to want to discover these things. So a lot of different plants and, and animals and stuff that are around you can discover, right? So what you have to do is depending upon you know um, what it is. You might have to harvest it first, or you might have to just um, examine it by pressing the F key. So right now, um, if I have the, um, let me look at something here. Yeah, okay, so I can either use my survival knife or I can use my bashing rock. So if I use my bashing rock, what I'm going to get is plant fiber, okay, which I actually need, right? Um, and notice that it also 
um, discovered the plant for me. So it, this is called a cactoid. I just call them sea urchins, but it's a cactoid, okay? Um, and by using the stone, I was able to get plant fiber. But if I come up to this cactoid, notice now it knows that it's a cactoid, and I press the G key instead to use the knife, it also gives me alien fiber. Okay, there's another tool, however, that we'll use in a little while that will give me, instead of alien fiber, it'll give me a, a, some material that's specific to this species of plant, which I can use in crafting later. That's the idea behind it. Okay, um, so we, we'll, we'll be doing that as we go along. So if I hit this plant and I slash it, I get sticks and I discovered it. So now I know that this is an azalea plant. And in this case, the bashing rock or the survival knife, they both do the same thing. But again, different tools will do different things. So just always keep that in mind as you're going along in the game. All right, so we have two different types of, uh, actually we have about three different types of edible plants just out of the box, so to speak. Uh, you have this tree here, this is called a, um, well here, let's go ahead and impact it first. Okay, we just discovered it, and it's a red fern berry tree. Now, this tree is going to be really important to you in the very early game because it is going to be um, a good food source to you until you can get something a little more substantial. So what you do is you just sit here and you use your bashing stone on it until um, it, it will it, until it doesn't uh, produce anything more. Now, you see how the berries are rolling down the hill there? Um, you have to watch that because you know there's of course there's physics and stuff in the game. And, you know, sometimes the berries will roll over a cliff and you can't get to them. So you, you kind of want to pay attention to that. But as I continue to bash this pretty soon, okay, so notice there's no more green circle. And in the upper left-hand corner, it says no more viable resources together. So now I know I've exhausted that tree. Now I just come around <clears throat> and I pick up all of the berries that I harvested. Some areas have, like, deep grass and can be a real pain in the butt uh, to find the berries after you've harvested them. All right, now, if you look on my screen, you'll see a red triangle and we come across our first creature okay so we're gonna have to use the knife on this guy and the knife the knife they give you in the beginning game uh, kind of sucks I mean that's just all there is to it so it's gonna take several hits to kill this guy and he some of them some of the monsters will run away from you after you they take a certain amount of damage others will not okay so now we've killed this skeleopod now what the game wants us to do here is it wants us to press the F key to inspect it and we have now discovered a skeleopod. Why is that important? Because it gives us science points. That's why it's important. All right, now, here again, I can either um, use the bashing rock or the knife to either get meat or maybe skeleopod-specific parts. Here's another really cool thing about a change that they've made to the game. Um, depending upon the critter, you can harvest different parts of the animal. So I can harvest the body, see how it says body harvestable, but I can also harvest the tail. Okay, so if I use the knife, I get alien tissue. And um, I, the bashing stone will also give alien tissue. But in a little while, we're going to make uh, some better tools that we can then get uh, leather or hide off of these guys, uh, which we're going to need uh, as soon as possible. Okay, so for right now, we're just going to harvest the tissue, which we can turn into uh, food later on. Okay, all right. So let's see. We have... Um, uh, I want to do a little bit more salvaging first because uh, we're, we're going to need uh, more stuff, okay? So I'm just going to go around and do a little bit of salvaging here before we move on to the next part. Starvation warning. All right, so we just got a starvation warning. Um, and so your suit will warn you when you are at half food. So if you look at the the little um, circles in the lower left hand corner, those are our diagrams, okay? So the one all the way on the left is my stealth meter. Um, so as that circle fills up, uh, that's it, whether or not monsters can spot me. And of course, crouching will help with that. Um, the next one that says HOV is my hover. So see how that starts to go down as I hover? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about hovering and that sort of thing later. The next one is the temperature that you see. Uh, outside temperature and my suit temperature because yeah, temperature is also a thing uh, the next one is hydration and nutrition okay so the outer ring is your hydration and the inner ring is nutrition and that uh, inner ring has passed below 50 percent so that's why my suit gave me a warning and then, then of course the last one is your health okay um, so yeah pay attention to the suit we're, we're okay right now we don't have to eat immediately but uh, we do want to be aware of that okay uh, we don't want to run out of food because then bad things happen. When you are salvaging these structures, 
not some things are salvageable some things are not so you have to kind of see what has like the little green outline on it um it's just a little bit weird that way so you have to hover your uh multi-tool over it until you find the harvestable part because see i can't actually harvest this it doesn't have the green line around it okay so um how much salvage do we have we're going to press f1 go take a look uh, this has alphabetical sorting or default sorting which is very useful and a, oh they changed the the icon for this too that's new as well oh they changed a lot of icons oh cool broken glass broken wire scrap plastic scrap rubber i love it i love it um, now, all of this scrap stuff that we're getting from salvaging is going to be really handy because later on, once we get a crafting table going and a furnace set up, we can actually change these into a whole wire. So two broken wires makes a whole wire kind of idea, which we're going to need to build stuff. Uh, so that's part of the reason why salvaging is so important. Okay, um, let's harvest this plant with our stone and it's a center fern. Now, once you get the shard blade, which we're going to work on here next, uh, then you, if you harvest this with a shard blade, you can actually get edible uh, material from it that you can eat. So this is another source of food, but you have to have the shard blade in order for that to work. Okay, let's go ahead and salvage the pod midsection here and just get a little more material. And then we're going to move on to the next thing, which is actually making our shard blade. Okay, I think that's enough salvage for now. Now what we want to do is we want to find the other type of, you know, fernberry tree, the purple version. This is the red version. We want to find the purple version. Uh, and while we're out and about doing that, so we're going to kind of go up on the this hill and look out over the horizon. Um, we're also going to continue to hit plants to get more plant fiber because we need to make... Um, a particular material that we're going to need to make then the shard blade which is going to be really important to us uh, so there's a purple fernberry tree there all right let's talk whoops let's talk about tra <laughs> traveling on foot here okay uh, that is a large leaf plant uh, again we want some more fibers for now okay so traveling on foot in the early game here's the thing it's very similar to imperion galactic survival for those of you who are familiar with that game uh, basically what you want to do is you want to you know start sprint and then just kind of kind of hop hover if you will but if you look at my hover meter in the lower left hand corner what you don't want to do is you don't want to wear it all the way out because if you do then it has a five second cooldown before it even starts to recharge and now it starts to recharge and that's just going to slow you down so try and get used to you know running along and just kind of what i call hop hovering but don't let the hover meter go all the way down because then it replenishes quickly and then you can move you know relatively fast across the landscape like so Okay, now the next thing is hills. Hills are dangerous. Okay, no, notice our suit just told us starvation warning uh, because now we're at a quarter nutrition. I'm not worried about that though because if I press F1, I have red fern berries which I can eat for nutrition, but I'm going to wait until that gets down a little bit further before we do that. Okay, uh, we also have some water that we looted uh, too, so that's going to you know keep us um, going for a while. Now, you have to be really careful on foot on hills in the game because if you get past a certain grade, um, then you can take damage. You can actually fall or, or slide and uh, it can hurt you and it can also breach your suit. So notice in the, in the very bottom center of my screen, it says slope is 38.9 degrees. Okay, that's warning me, be careful. Now, how do you deal with that? There's two ways you can deal with it. The main way is to crouch. So if you crouch, then you can safely go down a very steep hill without taking damage. The other way is to time your hover, you know, your jetpack so you can just jump off, but just make sure you time it right so you don't slam into the ground, okay? So that's how you deal with hills when you're on foot. All right, this is a, wait, is that still a red here? Let's bonk this and get some more fiber. Uh, yeah, I think this is still, yeah, this is still a red fern berry. Well, you know what? While we're here, let's just harvest it anyway so we can get the uh, more berries for food because we're going to need those um, for a little while. It's going to be our main food source for just a little while. Not too, too much longer, though. Okay, we're done because no more green circle, and it tells us in the upper left-hand corner, no more berries. All right, let's pick up our fern berries with the F key. And again, a really good food early on. We'll bonk this. And uh, there's one more berry here. Okay. 
Let's hit this for more sticks because we're going to need those too. Oh boy, crab monster. Okay. Until you get a crab scythe, this guy is a real pain in the neck to fight. Now, I could kill him with this knife, um, but I'd almost kind of rather avoid him right now. So let's do that. Let's just avoid him. We will come back. I promise you we'll come back and we'll kick the crap out of him in a little while. This is Nickel. Um, now, this goes down into the to what I call the deep desert. What happens in the deep desert is a giant worm. So think Dune and yeah, you know, you know. Him. So we're not going to be messing with that right now. Um, these crabs can be a real pain in the butt to get away from in the early game because see my stamina's low and uh, they are pretty fast. So what I need to do is stay on flat ground because if your character goes up on a steep incline, it'll automatically crouch for you to keep you from taking damage, but it also slows you way down. In the lower center of my screen is my stamina bar, okay? Um, it's actually, the game calls it your oxygen consumption, which is kind of the same thing, uh, but that's how I know, you know, if my stamina is about ready to run out. Okay, we have another crab monster there. Okay, let's um, let's see if we can kind of scooch up the hill here. And you can kind of, you know, jump and use your jet pack to get up the hill as needed. Come on. Oh my god, he's still chasing me. <laughs> Son of a... Yeah, these guys could be such a pain to get away from in the early game. Okay, here. Let's use our hover trick. I might end up having to kill this guy. I don't know if I can get away from him. Let's just try it one more time. You know, the more you... faster you run and the more you exert yourself, of course, the faster you're going to use up food and water. That's to be expected. So we're going to scooch down here, and then we're going to crouch. So see the stealth meter in the lower left-hand corner? That means the crab is no longer after us. Uh, noise counts, so you know the more noise you make, the more likely creatures can detect you. Uh, visibility, all that sort of thing, as you could expect. All right, our food is just about out. So what we're going to do is go to F1. We're going to right-click, and we're going to eat. Okay, and that filled up about 10%. So it takes quite a few of these to fill up, but they're really easy to get, right? So we're going to fill our nutrition down here in the lower left-hand corner all the way back up to the top with these berries. You can also put them on your toolbar and eat them quickly there. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and drink some water too to get our hydration level up. Okay, so we're good to go on uh, food and drink. Now, um, this thing in front of me, we want this. This is a crab talon. Wait, is this a crab talon? No, that's not a crab talon. Okay. Um... We're, we want to find a crab talon. That might be one there, but I want to make sure I don't aggro that crab again. Yeah, I think I think he's he's reset. Crab sheddings. Okay, now um, we're we're looking specifically for a crab talon because we're going to need it to craft our first uh, melee weapon. Here's a purple tree. This is what we needed to find. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our bashing stone out. I'm pressing number three. Let's get this out of the way because we need the material and we don't want to puncture our suit by running into it anyway. We'll get some more of this. Okay, now let's harvest the, the purple berries. This is just called a fern berry tree, but I call it the purple fern berry tree. Okay. And then we're going to pick these guys up. Okay, so the purple fern berries, um, these you can use for hydration if you, if you don't have water, but be aware that they will take down a little bit of your health. So just by way of demonstration, um, if I, so see my health, I'm at full health right now, uh, down here in the lower left-hand corner. If I eat one of these... It gave me hydration, but it hurt me just a little bit. I mean, not a ton. So what you can do is, you know, eat a bunch of these to get your hydration up and then take a bandage, you know, or, uh, yeah, take a bandage to compensate for it. Uh, and that's if you don't have water. If you have water, then you don't need to do that. What's more important to do with these berries, though, is to use them to make one of our most important early game materials that we're going to need for all kinds of things, and that is the Osiris version of duct tape. Okay, so what we're going to do is press F2, 
and we need to make makeshift patch tape. So how do we do that? We first have to make makeshift cloth bundle. And that's why we've been gathering all that alien fiber. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and hold my mouse button down and I'm going to craft a whole bunch of makeshift cloth uh, bundles because we're going to need it to make the tape. Okay, we have incoming. Um, here we have a, a parasite, so we're going to have to fight him with our knife. This guy's a pain in the butt because he's, he's relentless. He won't run away from you if you damage him. He's just going to keep coming until you kill him. And sometimes he can kind of ju juke a little bit too, so he can be a pain in the butt to kill. All right, so we've killed the parasite. Now we have the Colossus Beetle coming after us. This guy is big, he is slow, and he will bite you. But because he's big and slow, what you can do is you can get behind him and poke him in the butt. And he can't really do anything about it as long as you stay behind him and poke him in the butt here. Okay? Uh, but I don't have... A good weapon to kill him. You can see I barely did any damage to him. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna just run away from him. He's really easy to get away from. Okay, so we're gonna inspect this and it tells us this is a parasite. Oh shit, a parasite. Um and this guy is a snub and he's a big pain in the butt too. He's kinda like a giant tick. So let's get away from the Colossus beetle. And what he'll he'll start to run away from you after he gets down to about half health. And then we're gonna inspect him and it's a snubs, okay? So it's basically like a like I said, it's kinda like a big tick. We're going to harvest him, too. All right, so um, it looks like that guy's glitched. Let's just leave him alone. We'll kill him later, I trust me, because you get a lot of meat from him. But, again, we just don't have uh, the, the right tool for that job quite yet. What I'm looking for is this, crab sheddings. Okay, that's what we need. This is a crab talon, um, and it's going to make a really nice, actually, oh, shit, <laughs> a really nice weapon for us. The game doesn't want us to get our first melee weapon. It keeps sending the bugs after us. So let's deal with this guy because he's just going to hassle us otherwise. Okay. Oh, just butcher him for the meat. Okay, now let's just... Here, let's go over by this bank so we're not out in the open. Now we're going to go back into F2. And um, I'm just going to finish making these cloths, and then we're going to make the tape with the purple berries. Okay, now we're going to make makeshift patch tape. Notice that it shows me down below I need makeshift cloth bundles and fern, berry, or fern tree berries, the purple berries. So this is our early game duct tape. Very, very important to make this as soon as you can. Because then it's going to allow us to make two really important tools. The first one is the crab scythe. Notice that the crab scythe requires a crab talon, branches, and makeshift patch tape. We're going to click on that dude. Very good. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a shard blade. Okay, so to make a shard blade, we need a stone blade. To make a stone blade, we need to pick up two rocks, and then we can craft the stone blade in our inventory. Then we need makeshift patch tape to craft the shard blade. Why do we want this? Because this guy will get us different materials for when we harvest animals uh, and plants than the bashing stone. Okay, now I'm going to press F1 and we're going to change some things up on our toolbar. We're going to put the crab scythe down here. We're going to get rid of this knife because it's a piece of crap. We're going to put the shard blade here and we're going to keep their bashing stone here. So this is combat harvesting mining. Okay, uh, and we're going to hang on to this makeshift cloth tape because, you know, we're going to need more of that later on. Okay. Guys, the crab talon sh uh, uh, crab scythe is, is a very, very good melee weapon. It's such a good melee weapon that it continues to be a good melee weapon even when you get into the mid game. Why is this so good? Because it has, um, let's actually look at it here. If I hovered the cursor over it, it does a 15, give or take 10 damage, but it has 75% critical hit. It is badass. Okay. You can one-shot a crab monster with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get on this guy's butt. See the damage just one hit of this did compared to that knife I had? He dead. He dead. Okay. So it would have taken me probably two minutes or more to kill that thing with that stupid knife we had. Uh, but with this thing, it's badass. All right. Now, if I... Harvest this parasite with the crab scythe, I'm going to get meat. But if I switch to my shard blade, I get alien hide. You need that. Very important. Okay? Likewise, I can harvest the beetle 
uh, or the rhinoceros beetle guy with the knife for leather or for meat. I want leather right now, so I'm actually going to press F to inspect him first. This is the Colossus. Um, and now I'm going to use my knife to get a whole mess of hide because we are going to need it. Notice I can harvest his legs. I can harvest his body if I get close enough. And I can harvest his head. And then the other two legs. So, yeah, whenever you get a chance uh, to kill these guys, do it because you will get a lot of, of, of resources. They do uh, kind of ragdoll a little bit weird. Uh, so sometimes it can be hard to get to the different parts. But look at this. If I go to F1, excuse me, F1, I got over a half a stack of leather just from that one critter. Absolutely fantabulous. Fantabulous. <laughs> fantabulous. Okay. Now, if I go to the sea urchin and I use the, the, the shard blade instead of the stone, I get urchin shell. See? So I got a different type of material this time because I used a different tool. All right. Um, if we go to uh, these guys will give us alien fiber with this. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for one of the ferns. And I'm going to press L to turn my light on so we can see better. But keep in mind that your light will run out of battery, so you have to kind of be conservative with it. But what I'm looking for is a fern. There we go. So this is the cinefern plant. If I harvest it with the shard blade instead of the stone, I get cinefern uh, leaves. There's another one here. And these guys are really cool because I can eat them. So that's another early game food. They're also going to be used later on for making a, a, a dish, an actual, you know, meal um, as an ingredient. So uh, you can use the red berries or you can use the cinnaferns in the very early game when you're first starting out as food. So those are your two basic food sources. This is a zinc. It's 2.5 hardness, which means I can't harvest it. However, this here is a rock outcropping. So if I get my bashing stone, it's only a hardness of 0.5. My bashing stone is a hardness of 1. Uh, no, it's it's actually a harvest of 0.5 too. Okay, so it'll it'll work because it's the same hardness. Now, when you harvest rock outcroppings, you get 90% rock. But look, I just got a piece of gold from that too. So you're mostly going to get stone or rock, but you will occasionally get um, a mineral too. This is just a a, a, a a a static item, but this is a rock outcropping here. Now, you're going to want stone early on because, as you can see, you saw that we made tools with it, but you also need it. To, you can make it to create a stone wall for defenses because the aliens will gang you, uh, gang up on you. It's kind of like, you know, the horde from Seven Days to Die kind of idea. Not exactly the same, but they, they will gank you, especially at nighttime. Nighttime is very dangerous to be out in this game. Okay, we have a red triangle, which means something's coming after us. Where, wait, where the hell is it? Uh... Here, let's get our shard blade out. Hmm, that was weird. Oh, you know what I bet it is? There's probably a critter caught in, in the terrain. That'll happen sometimes in the game. There's probably something underneath that, like a snub uh, that was coming after us. So, yeah, you're going to want to harvest that stuff. Now, when I, um, when I mine, I get engineering points. So, good way to get engineering points in the early game is to... Um, if you look in the upper left hand corner, it's saying I'm getting like engineering points and uh, this is a good way to do it. There's two, there's two types of points. You get player XP, which allows you to then put points into your stats and you get engineering, science or combat points, depending upon, you know, what actions you're performing. Okay. Now notice it says in the, in the right hand corner, density rising. What that means is that a storm is on its way. And so what will happen on Proteus and on the other planets, too, is that uh, you'll get a uh, uh, you'll get a dust storm and it will do damage to you and could, you know, puncture your suit. So when that happens, you want to be un behind cover. You don't want to be out in, in the storm itself. It's honestly not too bad in in, you know, on the normal settings. Um, but, you know, it is a thing. And of course, if you wanted a bigger challenge, you could turn it up to where it, it does do more damage to you. But it's still, you know, not something you want to be out in. Um, so if, if the wind's blowing, you know, from that direction, and you can tell by just looking, um, you can just get uh, behind a, a bank or something, and as long as you're out of the wind, you'll be fine until it subsides. And it'll last about, I don't know, a minute or so in real life. 
we have a problem, and that problem is that we are encumbered. Okay, so I am 100%, 100.8% weight, and it, when you become encumbered, you start to, to slow down. Uh, so that means we need to stop gathering crap, and we need to find a place for a base. This we're going to drop because I'm not even sure if, if that's implemented in anything yet. It might be, but I haven't seen it, so I've never actually used them. And that gets us, well, we're still 100.5 weight. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to drop these stones only because they're so easy to get and they're very heavy because we still need to stay mobile. All right, let's go back this way. We have, a, we have a crab that we need to settle a score with, and then we need to start thinking about wrapping up this first episode. So where the hell is that crab at? There he is. All right. I'm going to show you how badass the crab scythe weapon is. We got this big old meanie here, and he's been a pain in our neck. And we're going to show him what for. Okay, so he's aggroed on us. He does his little animation thing. Now, when you're fighting a crab, try and, you know, try and stay to his side as much as possible. And look, we, we killed him in three hits. <laughs> See how badass this side is? We took this mother down in three hits. So, so crab side, you got to love it. You got to love it. The only thing to be careful of with the crab side is that it has very you know low durability so it, it will wear down and the further it wears down the less effective it becomes so the way to take care of that in the very early game until you get a repair table is just have some spare materials on you so you can just make a new one you need talons sticks and um uh, and the tape here that we made okay so let's inspect this and we find this is a crab monster now with the crab monster um we could harvest him for meat and he he actually drops crab meat as well as uh, just the generic tissue, uh, which you can use later on to make one of the better dishes in the game. But right now, leather is the most important thing to us because we don't need food and we don't have a way to cook food yet anyway. We have the berries and we have the cinnafern plants for food. So we want the leather and that's why I'm using the shard blade. So we're going around hitting his talons, his legs. Um, the crabs have a head that you can harvest, but it's, it's, it's sometimes you can't get to it. Um, there, that's a talon. There's a talon. And uh, so let me see if I can get to his head. Yeah, see, it, it it's really hard to get to their head sometimes. And so if you don't harvest the whole thing, he'll stick around for a couple of minutes and he'll eventually sink into the ground. Um, all right, so we have uh, 38 leather. So that's really good. That's really good. That's going to get us started. All right, you guys, notice that my shard blade actually is in bad shape uh, because we've been using it. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to make a new one. So let's find, because uh, we have no way to repair it at this point. So let's just get a stone, and then we're going to go into F2. We're going to craft a new stone blade. Oh, we need two rocks. And that's, again, why I wanted to have extra makeshift patch tape on me um, so that I can just remake these when they break until I get a repair table. Once I get a repair table, then I can repair stuff, and I don't need to keep remaking it. But until then, that's your only option. Okay, so we'll replace this one. We'll just drop this one because it's becoming ineffectual. All right, you guys. So what do we need to do now? We need to find a place to start our base. Um, but we're going to do that in the next episode because we are out of time here. Okay, so I'm going to leave you here and we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, I'm just going to kind of get right down here uh, out, out of the out of plain view, so to speak. Uh, and we will we'll pick up right where we left off in the next episode, and we will continue on, okay? So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It does help the channel. Uh, be sure to leave a comment and share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.